Welcome to part four and the final part of this Blender tutorial series where we're creating this birdhouse animation. So in this part, we're gonna be rendering the final scene and we'll be doing the compositing. And then we'll also be animating the scene, rendering out the images and compiling them together into the finished video. Now, if I go into the rendered view, I actually wanna change the shadows a little bit because you can see there's a lot of shadow on the birdhouse. So in the previous part, we created this object here and this object is gonna make it look like it's in a forest. So if I just select this object and then go into the camera view I can move this object around and I just want to make it so the birdhouse is in more light so I'm just gonna move it over to about there that is pretty good so now you can see the birdhouse is much more lit up but there's still a few patchy shadows in the rest of the scene so we can now go over the render settings so I'm gonna go here to the output properties and I'm gonna render this at a large image of 2560 by 1440 you could also just render it at the default of 1920 by 1080 and then let's go right over here to the render properties and I'm gonna open up the sampling now when we're doing the animation I'm gonna be rendering 250 frames and so when I'm rendering the animation, I'm just going to render with 100 samples so that it renders a bit faster. But just for rendering out a final image, I want it to be a bit more crisp and have a bit more samples. So if you open up the sampling, I'm going to turn it to 300. And then to make the image render a bit faster, we can open up the light paths. We want to turn down a bunch of these light paths. So we'll turn off the caustics, we'll turn the filter gloss to zero and the indirect light. Now the transparency, we do actually need some transparency because the edges of the leaves use transparency. But I can turn the transparency down a little bit you can see if I start to turn it down too far then there's going to be some black areas but I can just turn it to like a one or a two I think that is pretty good just to be on the safe side I think I'll turn it up to four just to make sure there isn't any dark areas along the leaves and then this transmission I can turn that all the way to zero and the glossy and the diffuse and the total I can turn these all down to two and that way the image will render a bit faster so now we can save the image and then render the scene let's go render and render image and the scene is finished rendering so I'm now going to click right here on the compositing tab we can use the nodes and for now I can drag the timeline down because we don't need it so let's now do the compositing so I'm going to start by searching for an RGB curves just because I want to do some color correction and then we turned on the node wrangler add-on earlier in this video so I'm going to control shift and select the RGB curves that'll bring the viewer node so that we can preview it in the background so I'm now going to do a bit of color correction so I first want to make this a bit more complex contrasty so I'm going to start by clicking here and pulling this up and then I'm going to click here and pull this down and that's going to make it a bit more contrasty you can see here it is without it and then here it is with it so it just kind of pops the colors and makes it look a bit nicer then I also want to add a glare so I'm going to hold down the shift key and right click and drag over these wires to add a reroute and this way I just have one wire that I can plug nodes into so I'm going to add the glare node let's drop this here I'm going to zoom the background out a bit and I'm going to change the streaks to fog glow and then you can see it's not really doing anything that's because there's not any one thing which is super bright so I'm going to turn the threshold down to a 0.5 and we'll just see how that's looking and so now it's just added a little glare to some of those lighter areas if I turn the threshold down even more you can start to see what it's doing so I'll just turn the threshold to a 0.4 now I also want to add a vignette so that the edges are darker so I'm going to search for the bottom box mask let's drop this here and if you click on the box mask you can drag these two values so I'm going to drag the width and the height so I'll drag this out here and then drag this out here and if we preview this you can see it's just a white box with a black background so I'm going to now search for a blur node because we want to blur the vignette so we'll stick the blur there and here on the x and y I'm just going to go with 300 so the edges are more blurred so I now want to mix the blur into the image and I want the white areas to be the image and then the black areas will be the vignette so I'm going to search for an alpha over node and let's drop this down here and then I can just select the reroute and I can drag these back. So I can use the alpha over node to mix in the vignette. So we're going to take the blur image, we'll put that into the factor, and then this glare here, that's the final image, we'll put that into the bottom one. So now the top one here, that is going to be the color of the vignette. So you could actually use white if you wanted to, that does look a little bit nice, but I'm going to go with black, so I'm going to make this fully black, and now the edges are a bit darker. And then finally, you can see this image is a little bit noisy, so I'm going to search for the denoise node, I'll just drop this here, and I'm going to change the accurate to fast instead dead so it goes faster and there is the final image so then to save this image we can select the viewer node and we can open up the side panel and we want to click on node and then you can click on the save this image button and save the final image 
You can also press the F11 key and that's going to go to the render result and you can click here and just add the viewer node and then you can click on image and you can just save the final image. So if you were just going for the final image and you want to finish the tutorial here then you can but I'm now going to show you how to animate this and then we'll render out the frames and compile it together into a video. So I'm going to hit the escape key and then I can go back here to the layout and hit the escape key again. So we can now animate this. So I'm going to go back to solid view and what I first want to do is have the birdhouse kind of rocking in the wind. So what I'm going to do is first select the rope object and I'm going to go into edit mode and I just want to deselect everything and then I just want to box select the two top handles. I'm now going to press shift s and I'm going to move my mouse down to the cursor to select it. So you can see the 3D cursor there is now in the center. So I can go back to object mode and I can now click on object and we want to set the origin to the 3D cursor. And this way you can see right here the transform pivot point is set to median point and so because the median point the origin point is right there on the top if I rotate this object and now it's going to rotate from the top here and so now it looks like it's rotating from this branch. So now what I want to do is just hold down the shift key and I I want to select all of the other objects for the birdhouse and I also want to select that empty which is controlling where the focus is. So just select all of these other objects and this bottom one here. And then I also want to select the two metal objects here, so those hooks. So once that's all selected I'm going to lastly shift and select the rope and then we'll parent this with control P and I can parent set to object. So now all of the other objects are parented to this object so we can just animate this object. So I'm going to go to front view and we can start with the animation. So I'm going to bring the timeline up so I can see it a bit better and I'm going to be animating 250 frames. So I'm first just going to go to frame one and I'm actually going to go into wireframe and you can see there's the grid there so there's the x-axis and the z-axis. So I'm going to click on this button here and this is going to turn on the auto key and then I can just rotate the object and we're just going to rotate it over a very small amount away from the center. So you can see this has just been brought over a tiny little bit and you can see it's automatically added a key frame. So I'm now going to go over about 30 frames and I can now rotate this and I'm going to bring it over just a little bit farther to about there. So now I can go back and forth and you can see it's rocking and I can use the space bar to play that. So now what I want to do is have it rotate back. So what I can actually do is click on this to turn off the auto key because we don't need that anymore. And I can just select this diamond here in the timeline. That's the first keyframe. And I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to bring it to frame 60 and then I can play this and it's going to move back. So then what I can do is press the A key to select everything. We want to select all those keyframes and I'll duplicate the keyframes and I'm going to bring them over and I'm going to stick this keyframe on top of that one there. So now those two keyframes are at the exact position. So now if we play this, it's going to rock over and then rock back and it's just going to continue to rock back and forth. So I will select everything again and I'm going to duplicate everything and I want to take this one here and I want to put it over the first one. And then I'll do that one more time. So duplicate this and then stick it here. And then I want the birdhouse to already be moving. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'll duplicate this and I'll bring it back. And this time I'm gonna drag this over so that these keyframes are on top of each other. So now we can just play that. Now you can see at the starting here, it's actually not moving. So if I just select everything, we wanna select all the keyframes, I can move this over so that there's a bit of an offset. And now if I play this, it's already rocking. So I can now go into the camera view, go back to solid view, and you can see it looks like it's just rocking in the breeze. All right, so the birdhouse animation is finished. So I'm now going to be animating the leaves. So I'm just gonna select one of these leaf objects, and we're gonna go here to the modifier properties, and and we're going to add the wave modifier. So it's here under D form. So now if I play this, you can see it's making the branch look like it's moving in the wind. Of course, it's way too strong, so we need to change the strength. So I'm first gonna start by turning the width and height down. So I'm gonna turn the height to a very small number, like a 0 0.013. And then here on the width, I just wanna turn this to like a 1.4. So now you can see it's just kind of bobbing up and down. So I now wanna make this much slower. So if I open up the time here, I can turn the speed way down. And I'm gonna turn the speed to a 0 0.02. So now if I look closely at this, you can see it is moving up and down, but it is very subtle. And so it looks like the wind is kind of blowing the branch up and down. So I now want the same wave modifier to be on all of these other objects. So what I can first do is just select some of these objects and hide them with the H key. And I'm just gonna do that for these bigger objects just to get them out of the way. And I'm gonna select this one here and hide that. I can also hide the camera. And then I'm just gonna hide these other objects. So I'm just selecting all the other objects. So the birdhouse 
and hiding that because I don't want to add the wave to these objects and also these objects here. So now just the leaves should be selected. So you can select everything and then lastly you can just select this object which has the wave. And we can use Control L to link and transfer the data and I want to copy the modifiers. So now if I play this you can see it is very subtle but all of the branches are moving just a little bit and it kind of looks like the wind is blowing them around. So I can press Alt H to unhide everything now. Now the last thing that I want to animate is this object here. So we're going to select this object. This is making the shadow. Let's click on add modifier and under a deform I want to add the displace modifier. So we're going to displace this with a texture. So here on the displacement I'll click on new and we can click on this button here. This is going to go to the texturing panel and I want to displace it with the noise texture. So if we click on the type here there isn't actually the noise but there is this clouds right here. This other noise texture here this is a very grainy texture and I don't really want that so I'm instead going to use the clouds which is very similar to the noise texture in the shader editor and then I can also shade this object smooth and then here on the size I'm gonna turn this to a 0.3 because I think that looks a little bit better so now you can see it is bumpy and it's going up and down but I want this to be moving so I want it to be rippling so to do that I'm gonna click back here on the modifier properties and you can see here we have coordinates and I want to click on this and just change it to object so now we can add an object and we can animate the object moving and then that is going to move the clouds and so it'll make it look like the shadow is rippling. So I'll go to the add menu here and I'm going to go to empty. Let's just add a plane axis and I can bring this up here. So I'm now going to go to the starting and then I can hit the I key to insert a keyframe. I'll insert location. Then I want to go all the way to the very end just somewhere here at the end and I'm going to move the empty over just a little bit to about there. And then using the I key again I can insert location. So now if I play this you can see the empty is slowly moving. Now I want the movement to be linear so that it doesn't speed up and then slow down. So we just want to select the two keyframes here in the timeline and then you can hit the T key and we just want to use linear here. So right now it's set to Bezier so it is smooth so it goes faster and then at the end it goes slower but I want to click on linear so that the speed is consistent. So you can see that is moving now. So then let's select this shadow object again and we'll choose the eyedropper here and we want to add this empty. So now you can see as the empty moves it's going to move that rippling and I think it could actually be moving a little bit faster so if I select the empty again I want to go right over here I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm just gonna place the timeline right there where that keyframe is and then if I just select the empty again I want to move it over a little bit maybe move it to about there so it's a bit farther and then I'll press the I key again I'm going to insert another location and that'll override that keyframe so now you can see it's moving a little bit faster and then you can also change the strength right here with the strength value I'm going to leave it at one so now if we go into the rendered view and take a look at the shadows it is a little bit hard to see because it's rendering in real time so it's really grainy but you can see that some of the shadows are kind of moving around bit and so it looks like there is leaves higher up and they're being rippled by the wind. Now there is actually one more thing that I do want to animate and that is the camera. So if you want to you can click right in the corner to select the camera and I'm going to go back to the starting frame and then I can just click on this button here again to turn on the auto key. So then you can just move the camera around. I'm going to start by moving the camera over to the side and then I want to rotate it. I'll just rotate it over to about there so it's pointed right there. Then I can go to the very end. I'll just go to frame 250 and I'm going to move the camera over and I can also rotate the camera so it slowly moves through the scene. I could maybe move it in a little bit and also rotate it up. So then I also want this to be a linear animation as well because I don't want it to speed up and then slow down. So I'll use the T key and I'll choose the linear on the keyframe interpolation. So now if I play this, I can actually go back to solid view. You can see the camera is slowly moving through the scene. Now I wanna make this look like it is slightly handheld and so I wanna make it look like it's a little bit bumpy. So what I'm gonna do is click right here when the crosshair appears and I can click and drag, let's split the window and then we wanna change this to the graph editor. Let's Go to the graph editor and if we open up this arrow here this is going to be all of the location rotation and scale of the camera so i want to add a noise modifier to the location of the camera so i'm first going to select the x location and let's click here on modifiers and we are going to add the noise so it's going to add noise to the keyframe so now you can see it's very noisy but then of course that is way too strong so i'm going to first start by turning the scale way up and i'm going to turn the scale up to 45. then it's still way too strong so I need to turn the strength value way down and I'm going to turn the strength value to like a 0.03. So now it is very subtle but it still is moving back 
and forth just a little bit. So then what I can do is I can use this copy and paste feature. So I'm going to click on this button here and that's going to copy the modifier. Then I can click on the Y location and click here to paste the modifier. And then I can also click on the Z location and click here to paste the modifier again. So now if I look at the camera, you can see it is just moving around a little bit and it looks a bit more natural and a bit more handheld. All right, so we can now render out the images to frames. So I'm going to click here and then drag over and then let go to close the timeline. And then let's go here to the render properties again and I'm going to go to the samples and I'm just going to render this with 100 samples so that it renders much faster. And then when I rendered out the final animation when I was prepping for this tutorial. I did render it at this 2k resolution, but this is going to take a long time to render. So I'm just going to render it by 1920 by 1080. So the X is 1920 and then the Y is 1080. So we now need to choose a folder that we can render all the frames out to. So let's go to the output here and we can choose a folder and you can locate to the folder where you've saved the project files. I'll click on the plus here to create a new folder and I can just call this frames and I can double click on this and then click on accept so it'll render out all the frames to that folder and then also I want to turn the auto key off because I don't accidentally want to add a keyframe so I'll save the file again let's click on render and we can render the animation and the frames have finished rendering so I'm now going to video edit this together and you can use whatever video editing software you have I'm going to be using blenders video editor so I'll save the file then I can click here on file and I'll go to new I'm going to add a new video editing and then right down here in the sequence using the add menu I'm gonna go here to image slash sequence then you can just locate to the folder with all the frames I'll press the a key to select all of them and we also want to click right up here and make sure we sort by name and that way it's gonna start at one and then go two and three and go all the way down and then I can click on add image strip and we can play this and check out the final animation and because I rendered this with 250 frames the start frame and end frame are already at the correct spot now if you want to add a nice sound effect of nature and birds then you can download the free sound effect that I'm using from freedsound.org the link will be in the description so I'm just going to drag and drop the sound effect from my file browser into blender and I can just move it down here and also I can click on this button here to see the waveform and then I can just play through this and listen to it so then to render this out to a final video let's go down here to the output and we first want to click here to set an output and I'll just set the output in the folder with my other files and I'll just call this final animation and then click on the accept button and then let's go down here to the file format I'm going to re be rendering this to the FFmpeg video and then I'll just real quick show you the settings that I like to use with the FFmpeg video so if you open up the encoding here I'm going to use mpeg4 on the container I'm also going to use h.264 on the video codec and medium quality and good and also for the audio here I'm going to use a AAC for the audio codec. So then you can save this video editing file if you want to, and I can click here on render and render the final animation. So this is going to wrap it up for this tutorial series on this birdhouse animation. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series and thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy my tutorials and you'd like to help support me and this channel, then some great ways to do that are by checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page, where you can get access to 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, procedural materials and other blender content on my gumroad and patreon and you can also get the project files of this tutorial on my gumroad and patreon as well but i hope you enjoyed this tutorial series and thank you for watching